If you regularly experience a number of nights of poor sleep, followed by one, maybe two nights of good sleep before the cycle continues with another string of bad nights, it's very likely that you'll find cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, CBTI techniques, to be very helpful. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Hi, I'm Martin Reed. If you have insomnia, I offer sleep coaching programs that will give you all the skills and support you need to enjoy better sleep for the rest of your life. You can learn more at insomniacoach.com. A common complaint among people with insomnia is that they'll have a number of nights of bad sleep, followed by one, maybe two nights of good sleep, only for the bad nights to return. And then there's this cycle of a string of bad nights, followed by a short period of good sleep, followed by bad sleep, and then good sleep, and so on and so on. Now, first of all, here's some good news. If you recognize this pattern, it's evidence that your sleep drive system is working as it should. So there's nothing in effect broken with your sleep system. What's probably happening is that your arousal system is kicking in and this temporarily suspends sleep. So the arousal system is kind of like a survival mechanism. This survival mechanism is designed to protect us and suspend sleep in times of danger whenever there's a perceived threat. But unfortunately, the arousal system is easily triggered. As soon as we worry about something, the arousal system can be triggered. Now it's very common for there to be a lot of conditioned arousal. So you learn through repeated nights of bad sleep and worry and anxiety and frustration that the bed is a place for wakefulness, worry and frustration. So you can struggle to fall asleep as soon as you get into bed or you can struggle to fall back to sleep as soon as you wake up during the night. Now when sleep drive is really strong because you've had a number of nights of really poor or no sleep, this doesn't really cause any problems because sleep drive gets you through, it's making you sleep. But as soon as this sleep drive has been somewhat relieved through a night or two of good sleep, once again the arousal system can take over and suspend sleep. But here's the thing, the arousal system can't suspend sleep indefinitely because over time sleep drive will become so strong it can overpower the arousal system and therefore you will sleep. Just as we can hold our breath and suspend breathing, after a while the body will just take over and make us breathe. And the same thing goes with sleep. So if you experience a number of nights of really bad sleep, this is probably because your arousal system is activated and you're worried about sleep, anxious about sleep, frustrated about sleep. But this cannot continue indefinitely. After a certain period of time, sleep pressure, this sleep drive that's been building and building the longer you've been going without sleep, will soon reach a point where it just overpowers the arousal system and makes you sleep. So then you experience that one, maybe two, or maybe maybe even three nights of good sleep. But unfortunately, once your sleep drive has recovered and it's now at a lower level, you've got some sleep, once again, your arousal system can take over and suspend sleep. So once again, you're trapped in this seesaw of good sleep, bad sleep, good sleep, bad sleep. The best way to address this problem is through CBTI techniques because they specifically address everything that's activating the arousal system. For example, CBTI can help address any inappropriate or incorrect thoughts we have about sleep. So if we, for example, believe we have to get eight hours of sleep each night, which is quite rare, we will become worried and concerned and maybe even put pressure on ourselves to get these eight hours of sleep. And that activates the arousal system. So learning that we don't need to strive for eight hours of sleep can help relieve this worry and weaken the arousal system. CBTI also works because not only does it help address the thoughts that are interrupting our sleep and activating the arousal system, but they also tackle the behaviors that we often implement when we have insomnia in a bid to improve our sleep or compensate for a bad night of sleep. 
So for example, we'll learn that it's not a good idea to spend more time in bed, to go to bed earlier than normal, to sleep in late in the mornings and get out of bed at a different time every day. We learn that it's not a good idea to do anything in bed other than sleep. So if you wake during the night and you're struggling to fall back to sleep, that's when you get out of bed until you feel relaxed and sleepy enough before returning to bed. And this helps break the conditioned arousal, which again keeps us awake at night. We can learn to associate the bed with wakefulness and worry instead of relaxation and sleep. So these are just a few of the ways that CBTI can help reduce the power of the arousal system. And if you recognize that you're often having a string of bad nights followed by a short period of good nights only for the bad nights to return again, it's very likely that you'll find CBTI techniques to be very helpful at breaking this cycle, giving you more consistent sleep and turning the tables so that you have more nights of good sleep and fewer nights of bad sleep. So I hope you found this short video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I try and share a short sleep snippet video every weekday. If you have any questions, comments, feedback or suggestions for a future video, please leave a comment below or you can email me directly. My email address is hello at insomniacoach.com. I hope to see you back here again soon and remember you can sleep.